So as quick as anything, I am now at Wellingborough Railway Station and already I'm extremely impressed, but I've now got company. We're back with Purple. How are you, mate? I'm all right, buddy. Good to see you again. And you, it's nice to be in your hometown. Yeah, I know. Welcome. About time, you know, you've showed me all of your stuff. So it's about time I kind of give you the greatness that Wellingborough's got to offer. Exactly. And it's only fair. So, like I said, massively impressed. There seems to be a lot to learn here. So let's have a little look around and welcome once again to Down the Line. So this station opened in 1857, originally as Wellingborough Midland Road. And in 1981, the station building was designated as a grade two listed building. And it's so easy to see why it is absolutely stunning. And for my first time here, like I said, I'm incredibly impressed. But in modern times, it is managed by EMR and has four platforms. And in terms of where you can go from here, where well, you can go back to Bedford, You've got Corby and even on to Melton Mowbray on peak services. So like I said, there's a variety here, but the learning aspect is what I'm here for. And Purple's going to show me the way. Oh, what a day. Now, between Wellingborough and my local station of Bletchley, I have to say that this station is a clear winner. Albeit the future projects that are happening at Bletchley, instantly I was massively impressed as I've already said. And there has also been an interesting restoration project here that Purple will now talk you through. Right, so this is Wellingborough Unloading Shed. And back in the steam days, we used to have trains come into here and take off the wagons. And the wagons would be unloaded by these cranes. So it's very old and it was in a very derelict state up until last year, where we at the Civic Society had managed to get it restored and made into part of the walkway for the platform because just outside the uh, platform it is just too narrow for people to walk down so they turn this into the main walkway so you don't cross over the yellow lines when you're walking by so um, we are waiting for EMR to get back hold of us because we want to open this officially um, yeah it's been a year now and I think that needs to happen but, but watching the whole renovation project of this going on has been marvellous I tell you pretty good so this is actually the uh, part of the platform and if you actually look right down the bottom you can see the curved arches where the water will be able to flow out of should it flood because there's quite a few wells up here in the springs so yeah Wellingborough loading and unloading shed I am also very impressed with the way that Wellingborough presents their history with plaques and also there's plenty to see in the ticket hall so make sure when you're next here you take a time to stop and stare at Wellingborough's history in that way, did you know Wellingborough actually had a fifth platform? Well, it wasn't a platform, it was a bay platform. I Just didn't know that. Steps. So where the railing is, that used to be another bay platform where it would take you across the then wetlands towards Northampton. And to get that train would actually take 15 minutes off your, tra uh, your time, because it takes 45 minutes now on a bus. That used to take half an hour. And it's all gone, thank you, Dr Beecham. <laughs> Yes, unfortunately that Dr Beecham virtually ripped the heart out of many well-loved lines. But as always, the memories live on and it's thanks to volunteers and enthusiasts are the reason why that they are never forgotten. So, as we stood here, Purple's informed me of two rail movements that are happening. So we've got the car train, which is double-headed with two 66s, and also there is a class 37, which you were telling me it failed yesterday at yeah, Acton, it, didn't it? It failed at Acton Yard and then it's on its return journey up to um, Derby RTC. So. so, that's a surprise in the mix. That wasn't planned, but it's a 37, so we're never ever going to complain with a 37. Oh, hell no. We'll hopefully see that coming up. There are quite a few rail movements that do pass through Wellingborough, and a class 37 and 47 are no strangers here. So, check out Purple's YouTube channels in the description below to see a whole lot more of Wellingborough Station. We're just heading on to platform four to get a good view of the 37. But a bit more of the history here, they had a large loco depot and two roundhouses built in 1868 and 1872. Now, modern times has obviously taken over and destroyed quite a lot of that. However, the, which Purple just pointed out is in view. Oh, that's nice. But nonetheless, the 1872 structure still exists to this day so 
I'm very glad that some of it is still in view for people. You've got to love your railway heritage. What an hour spent at Wellingborough. That was absolutely fantastic. And that 37, wow. A driver put on the show for us, didn't he, mate? He, he did, really did, he did, he did very, very well. So from my first impressions here, this is an extremely impressive station. And I think I might come back on a few more occasions. I, th I think I have to. Well, there's plenty to see around here, mate. I've caught the Wellingborough bug. But nonetheless, what is it you've got in store for me next? Well, I'd like to take you up into one of our oldest villages, which is called Findon. And up in Findon was Ironstone Central. So there's so many dismantled railways and quarries. There may even be something I might be able to show you, but we'll keep that a secret because it would be uh, pretty cool. Hush, hush. Mm. So the excitement is building, but you'll see me soon after in that video. But for me and Purple, we'll see you next time down the line. <laughs>